Hello, I've decided to keep a vlog of my fourth and possibly last pregnancy. I guess I should start at the beginning in my journey. For my first child, I went the hospital route after not being able to find a midwife and the birth center, the only local birth center, was full. So those options were out the window and ended up going the hospital route with a group of three OBs who I ended up meeting at the end of my pregnancy for whatever reason they kind of I guess forgot about me and were like oh well I guess you should meet the doctors now that you know you're close to delivering your baby um and that was a whole just not very pleasant experience uh I didn't know the system, I didn't know all the protocol that they have to stick to, and uh, it just, you know, wasn't what I wanted to begin with. I wanted to have a nice, peaceful, natural experience. I wanted to just enjoy my pregnancy and have as little intervention as possible, but ended up doing, you know, all the normal things where they test you, do all the tests, and, um, a couple ultrasounds luckily they didn't do too many um, so that was good I went through that and actually went into labor you know like a, on my due date according to me because they decided to change my due date a week uh, before to a week before as originally it had been the 25th and that's the date that I felt was truly my due date and my baby came that day was I started labor and uh, everything was you know normal was completely healthy great pregnancy ended up getting a rash near the end but I was able to kind of control that uh, and get rid of it before the actual birth so I didn't have that discomfort I went in and I was a little bit poked and prodded made to sit in the bed and got uncomfortable and have the monitors on me and began to swell and then there was talk of c-section luckily my partner remembered that i had wanted to try the shower as a coping mechanism and so i did that and of course my swelling went down because i was able to relax and i don't know how long i was in there after hours i was made to move because they said i was flooding the lower level whatever was below us I guess the water was somehow leaking down and you know I'm not gonna go through everything labor was fine I was fine they eventually got me out of the shower and got their hands on me and from there it just went downhill every time the OB would touch me it would hurt she was trying to rotate my baby because initially she was OP and she wanted to check you know for you know, it's what they do but completely unnecessary um, they got me in the bed I told them I could feel my body better when I was upright and squatting but she wanted me to lay back so she could check long story short I became exhausted and she really wanted to get out of there she was in a rush you could tell from the beginning so her rushing led to me pushing when I wasn't ready and becoming exhausted and then this lovely nurse that was assisting suggested that I let her help me and so I did that led to a uh, vacuum extraction and she literally ripped my baby out of me nearly scalped my baby she had a laceration hematoma and ended up having to have a NICU stay it was the most surreal experience of my life because I hadn't had any kinds of um, medication any kind of drugs other than uh, a bit of antibiotic for the strep B which <clears throat> is a whole other story so I had these euphoric you know um, feelings because I, I had all, all the natural hormones flowing through me while at the same time I was horrified at the fact that my baby came out wasn't breathing they had her on a table I was asking if she was okay and nobody was answering me and you know but at the same time, just this, this crazy uh, feeling of, of a joy and happiness. And she eventually did breathe. I, she let out a, a little holler, and I was able to then breathe myself. 
And the doctor finished up her thing, sewed up the episiotomy that she did, which I wanted none of this. I just wanted to have a natural, pleasant birth, which was absolutely possible, possible because there was nothing wrong. There was absolutely nothing wrong. Everything was progressing per perfectly. And it was simply the doctor who was in a rush and wanted to get home and decided to risk my baby's life. Um, for that so that was my first birth experience we ended up having to stay in the hospital at least a week she was in the NICU for most of that time and then they wanted to do the um, have her under the lights and it was just all kinds of stuff and they did so many pricks into her foot they were just it was awful they her little heels were completely covered in these little holes from all the pricks they did um, and so after that experience, um, I had already known that we were made for this, that birth is a natural physiological process, that so many women before me had done it without any kind of medical assistance, that in the past we had midwives, but we also had our communities and we grew up seeing these things. And it wasn't something that needed to be interfered with as our society does today. So from that experience, I went on to become obsessed with everything pregnancy, birth related. I read literally every single day about birth and pregnancy and I consumed everything from studies. I would look at women's experiences. I would, um, you know, uh, listen to doctors and nurses and midwives, people who had unassisted births, people who had midwife assisted births, people who still went through the system and had the hospital births. And eventually I came to the conclusion that I don't need anyone. I don't need anyone but myself and my knowledge to get through this, to have a beautiful healing birth, pregnancy and birth for my next experience. So I wasn't able to get pregnant until about six years later. Um, I had a new partner and everything, and I was ready to have my healing um, family birth or free birth. Some call it unassisted, but it's not really unassisted because you have yourself, your body, your baby, your partner in my case, um, and my daughter. So I, you know, uh, I made this decision, and it was final. There was no talking me out of it. I knew what I knew and I knew it was right for me and my family. My partner initially questioned it. You know, his sisters had gone to the local birth center and he said, well, why don't you go that route? And I said, it's not for me. I'm going to have an unassisted birth with or without you. And that's the, it. that's it. End of story. And luckily he's been very supportive. I've given him lots of information. He trusts me. He knows that I read about this stuff daily and uh, you know so we went from there 